Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, uh, let us continue with the subtopic of stereochemistry which is conformation and reactivity. Now, earlier we have uh, done what is called the uh, static stereochemistry, we have done the conformation energy, conformation analysis of various conformations and how the energy uh, varies with that and which type of molecule uh, will prefer one conformation of over with the other and the reason for such type of preference that we have discussed. Now, in the dynamic stereochemistry, the first thing that was uh, very relevant was the cartin hamid principle, because in dynamic stereochemistry, now you have uh, conformation, uh, conformation flexibility. So, one conformer uh, goes to the other conformer and uh, it may so happen that one conformer leads to one compound and the other conformer leads to another compound. So, the question is what will be the ratio of the two products? These products uh, ratio according to cartesian hamid principle, if the conformational flexibility barrier is low, that means it is happening at a very rapid rate as compared to the rate of the reaction, then what happens? The ratio of the two products is not dependent on the population of the conformers in the ground state, uh, it depends on the difference in the free energies of the respective transition states for the two processes. Okay. And we have given some examples, however, as I said the cartin hamid principle uh, usually what happens that the more stable conformer gives the major product. That means, the conformer which is more populated is giving the major product. So, that uh, people might say that the formation of the major product was due to the greater population of the starting conformer. Now, to really prove it, uh, the best way is to if I can show that the least, the, the less stable conformer that means, the less populated conformer uh, giving the major product. And yesterday, I have given you an example of a bicyclic as a bicyclic compound where alkylation uh, is happening from a uh, less populated conformer. So, that uh, really proves experimental proof for the cartin hamid principle. Now, we will we'll elaborate on this cartin hamid principle, but uh, we will uh, last time you remember that I told you about uh, the preference of certain conformers uh, to have axial, axially oriented groups like uh, in case of 1, 3 cyclohexane diol where hydrogen bonded plays a key role in forming the diaxial conformation. Then dihalo system 1 to dihalo system in order to uh, reduce the repulsion between the two halogens negatively charged halogens. The, the molecule also uh, takes a takes a conformer where the, uh, the halogen groups are axial. Okay. And uh, we have also seen that there is an effect called the alkyl ketone effect. We have seen the two alkyl ketone effect the 3 alkyl ketone effect and I told you brief, briefly about the 4 alkyl ketone effect. I will just tell something about the 4 alkyl ketone effect. Uh, the alkyl ketone effect arises because of the presence of the ketone in the cyclohexane system. The presence of the ketone what it does it immediately affects the it affects the, the hydrogens in the equatorial positions. This bond is now almost eclipsed to this carbonyl. In addition to that, you have now, if you have a group here, there is only one hydrogen at the axial position in 1, 3 relationship, where the 1, 3 diaxial interaction takes place. So, by putting this carbonyl, first of all you are incorporating this eclipsing interactions and you are reducing 1, 1, 1, 3 diaxial interaction. So, what happens here? That there is a, that there is a a substantial amount of the if it group is r then there is a substantial amount of the 
this going into the axial orientation and this effect is called 2 alkyl ketone effect because it is in the 2 position with respect to the carbonyl. If there is a R here, then also because of the reduction of 1 diaxial 1 3 diaxial hydrogen, this conformer will also be present in uh, substantial amount in greater amount as compared to a cyclohexane system. So, this is what is called the 3 alkyl ketone effect and there is also this was done by LEL he uh, showed that there is also 4 alkyl ketone effect that is also present although this is quite remote from this, but it is due to the fact that because of the flatness of these two at uh, the carbonyl and the two carbons the flatness of this ring. So, these hydrogens are little bit bent towards this direction. So, if that happens then what happens if you have a methyl here and a methyl here. So, this methyl suffers less suffers less 1 3 diaxial less 1 3 diaxial interaction as compared to a cyclohexane system. Okay. So, how do you know that it suffers from less interaction? Uh, the experiment to do is that you take dimethyl cyclohexanol, dimethyl cyclohexanol and you take cyclohexanol. So, one this is 4 4 dimethyl cyclohexanol and this is cyclohexanol. Now, if you oxidize it, you will see the rate of oxidation suppose this is R 1 and the rate of oxidation this is R 2, you will see that R 1 is greater than R 2. This is because that in this oxidation you are releasing the 1 3 diaxial interaction suffered by this axial methyl. If it is in the alcohol form then there is this this is the, these are in the normal 1 3 diaxial mode, but as soon as oxidation takes place. So, there is a release of the this steric strain that 1 3 diaxial interaction. So, this undergoes oxidation faster the oxidized product is this, but this undergoes oxidation oxidation slower. Okay. So, this is this is what that means this is giving some stability to the uh, to the system okay and the stability arises due to these two hydrogens being bent away from the methyl group okay so thus reducing the 1 3 diaxial interaction this is what is called the 4 alkyl ketone effect because now you have 1 2 3 4 so this is 4 alkyl ketone effect so i thought just to complete the whole thing because i said one about two alkyl ketone effect 3 alkyl ketone effect quite elaborately. So, I should say about something about 4 alkyl ketone effect and why does it originate that is the important thing because of the bending of this C H axial hydrogens. Okay. Similarly, yesterday also I again told another uh, kind of system where there is uh, there is significant amount of axial uh, axial substituent and that happens in very similar system like the cyclohexanone only thing that you have a double bond here exocyclic double bond with substituents R 1, R 2 and R 1. So, here what happens now if there is a group here, so that is now uh, undergoing steric compression with this R 1. So, as a result this undergoes flipping and you get you get this R as axial. So, now there is no steric compression between the between the R 1 and R. So, R R 1 that one is there. Okay. So, that is now gone that is not present. So, there is significant amount of this axial conformer and this is what is called A 1 3 strain A 1 3 strain. Okay. Now, because this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So, that is the origin the name uh, how it originates. Now, instead of uh, there is another one that is called A 1 2 strain. If the double bond happens to be in the inside of the ring. So, if the double bond happens to be a cyclo that means, you are talking about a cyclohexene okay. and in cyclohexene um, there is if there is a 
there will be an interaction between these two groups and this interaction of R 2 with R 1 will depend upon whether R 2 is axial or in the equatorial conformation. However, orientation. Now, the um, question is we have not done the uh, how the uh, this cyclohexane uh, looks like. We have done the cyclohexane, but just uh, to, to let you know that cyclohexane exists as a as a conformer which looks like this. Mm, sorry. It is somewhat like this. So, it is a it is what happens here that one carbon uh, these see basically this is a double bond. So, this carbon this carbon that carbon and this carbon these are in the plane how many 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry 5, 6, 7. So, this is the cyclohexene. So, these 4 carbons are in the plane and then one carbon it goes above the plane another carbon goes below the plane. Okay. Now, if you have uh, the, a substituent here and a substituent there, this is called the equatorial pseudo equatorial you can call this is not perfectly equatorial uh, like the cyclohexane and this is the axial position. Okay. So, if it uh, first of all this is not a planar system this is a kind of what is called a half chair type of conformation and uh, in the conformation you must uh, clarify that 4 carbon atoms are in the plane 1, 2, 3, 4 and this goes uh, down and this goes up, this goes down and this goes up. So, this is in the plane of this of this because of the double bond sp 2 nature okay, that has to be. Now, this R 2 is in the equatorial orientation, if it is in the equatorial orientation it suffers from now, steric compression with R 1 because there is lot of kind of uh, they are very close to each other. So, that flips and it takes a conformation where let us see to how to draw it. So, it takes a conformation where a confirmation maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, no, six, six, seven. so something like this that is the flip form and the R 1 goes to the top a R 2 goes to the top sorry and this is the R 1. So, this is the flip form of the cyclohexane. So, again I start from the beginning that if you have this di substituted cyclohexene system by the way cyclohexene is a non planar system. If this R 2 is in the equatorial position or a pseudo equatorial position to be precise, then there is steric compression between R 1 and R 2. If you flip it then R 2 goes into the axial position like this. So, it is oriented upwards and if it does that then this interaction is gone. So, this kind of strain is called A 1 2 strain. So, A 1 2 strain is because this is one carbon and you can say this is 2 because they are adjacent to each other. So, that is called A 1 2 strain and there are many reactions which are uh, controlled uh, stereochemically by this A 1 2 strain. I can show you in the model whatever I, I was telling you that in the uh, in the this is the cyclohexene, this is the cyclohexene, this is the double bond this is the double bond and then you have these 4 carbon atoms in the plane as I was saying. So, one carbon goes down, one carbon goes down, another carbon goes up. Okay, this is the system. Now, what happens? This is the pseudo equatorial substituent on my left and this is the substituent attached to the olefinic carbon. Okay. So, you see now they are their diagonal angle is not 0 degree, not 60 degree also, but they have a much they are quite in the eclipsing uh, eclipsing interaction zone and in that zone there will be steric repulsion between this and that and there will be bond opposition strain also. So, that makes it little unstable. So, in order to 
avoid this type of strain, what this molecule will do? This will undergo flipping. So, you see the flipping, what happens? The up carbon goes down and the bottom carbon goes up. As earlier, this was up and this was down. Now, this is down, this is up. But what happens? This is the substituent which is now pointing upwards, that is, it is axial. Okay. So, this axial orientation now avoids the, the steric compression that it was suffering when it was in the equatorial position. So, this is what is the genesis of A 1 2 strain. Okay. So, you also know little bit about the cyclohexene uh, geometry now. You can actually write a cyclohexene, there are two ways of writing, one is the, the way I have written, another is that the way I have shown, uh, shown you in, in the model and if you now write a perspective formula from the model, so this is what is happening. So, this is the scenario. So, this is the substituent I was talking to you and these are the, this is the R2 and this is the hydrogen. Okay. So, when it flips, So, it goes into the this will go down. So, now the chair will uh, the half chair will look like sorry half chair will look like this. Okay. So, if I number it 1 say 2 3 correct numbering should be 1 uh, this is 1 2 3 something like that. I am not following the IUPAC system just a rough numbering 1 2 because I want to show the allylic 1 2 strain the this vicinal strain. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, now it will be 1, this will be 1. So, this is 2, that is no doubt 2, this is 3, that has gone down, this is 4, this is 5 and this is 6. Okay. Now, where is this R1? I R2, the R2 is pointing to this side and R1 is still here. So, now this interaction is less, there is no interaction, practically no interaction between R1 and R2, but here is there is A 1 2 strain. Okay. This is the other way to write the, the cyclohexene, okay. whichever is convenient for you, you do that. Okay. But we mostly will use this later on, we will use this type of conformer uh, in, in describing certain reactions. Okay. So, that is again um, some kind of static uh, stereochemistry that we, we talked about that how uh, the preferential conformation is dictated by this kind of strains. So, we have seen different kinds of strains. So, these are the additional ones. Okay. There is one more important, um, important strain that is there. Mm, just a second, let me try to yes, clear that. Okay. So, let us see, mm, there is another effect like this allylic effect is there, there is this ketone effect is there, there is another effect which also tries to put the substituent in the axial position preferentially and that is called anomeric effect. Anomeric effect. Now, anomeric effect actually the name comes, uh, comes from the uh, the sugar chemistry, where you know that glucose uh, has the number one carbon of glucose is also called the anomeric carbon. So, let me write the, the glucose structure, two forms of glucose are there. This is the alpha D glucose. and there is this beta D, this is the beta sorry, this is the beta D glucose and the other one is alpha D glucose. Alpha is when the weight is axial, other groups remain at the same orientation. So, this is the alpha D glucose. Now, in water solution, you know that this is the predominant one, it exists as a 2 is to 1 mixture of the alpha and beta uh, D glucose. Uh, 2 is to 1 mixture of beta, beta is 2 
and alpha is 1. So, if you take pure alpha then this undergoes muter rotation and ultimately it creates a mixture where this is 2 and that is 1 or if you take beta put it in a solution amphoteric character with amphoteric character base both acid and base character then it undergoes muter rotation and ultimately the equilibrium value is reached where this is present uh, in a 2 is to 1 ratio. Okay. So, that is understandable this weight is equatorial and this weight is axial. So, um, we know that the groups tend to be uh, tend to assume the equatorial position preferentially. So, that is ok, but the moment this was made into uh, uh, OME say the methyl glucoside So, this is the alpha methyl glucoside glucoside and this is the beta methyl glucoside. Now, between these see if you want to do this glucoside formation with methanol and take glucose whether it is alpha or beta uh, because they will always be equilibrating into this uh, via muter rotation into a 2 is to 1 form. So, we expect that if I take glucose d glucose and do this glycosylation the methyl this methyl glycosylation then I expect that this should be formed in major amount and this should be formed in minor amount, but in the uh, on the contrary actually this was formed in the major amount this was found to be major. And so, what happens when it is glucose? It was which the as expected the which assumed preferentially the equatorial position. But when you convert the which into OME or OCOCH3 and uh, or OCOCH3, then what happens? The uh, the preference for the axial orientation increases. Preference for the axial orientation increases, and that is what is called because this is happening at the anomeric carbon and this is what is called the anomeric effect. The anomeric effect is the effect in which the axial orientation is preferred over the equatorial orientation. Okay. Now, this happens then this happens only when you have oxygen here if you remove the oxygen then this was more stable than this one, but if you have the oxygen here then this thing happens. Now, what about the other groups later on people found that this is a very general effect it is you do not need these groups. So, if you have an oxygen and then the next carbon is a is a stereogenic carbon and you put OME at the axial and OME at the equatorial which one is more stable it was found that the axial was more stable than the equatorial and why is that the explanation there are many explanations one explanation is the what is called the dipole uh, because in this case the dipole uh, the polarity is in this direction and the COOME also in this direction. So, there will be repulsion between these dipoles. So, which is minimized in case of in case of the axial methoxy, but there is another which is a little better uh, better approach to to explain this preference for the axial orientation and that is uh, what is said is that see oxygen has two lone pairs one is pointing towards the axial position and the other is pointing towards the equatorial. Now, if you have the OME attached in the axial position, so you have a so you have a carbon oxygen bond. Now, oxygen orbital and carbon orbital are combining with each other. So, they form a they can form an antibonding orbital which is has a bigger lobe at the back side and that is empty. So, now this oxygen lone pair in the axial position and this empty sigma star they are in lateral position. So, there is a possibility that this oxygen now overlaps with this with this empty antibonding sigma star the carbon oxygen sigma star orbital thus stabilizing the system which is not possible in case of the equatorial isomer because the antibonding orbital will be on this side. So, there will be no interaction. So, now you have this interaction which is stabilizing the axial isomer. So, the, I think that is a better way of explaining the anomeric effect. 
So, this is another new uh, chemistry that you have learnt this anomalic effect uh, that is whenever you have a system in which a heteroatom like oxygen is present in a ring then the next adjacent carbon uh, ad tries to adopt a orientation in which the electronegative group now this is an electronegative group that has to be important it does not happen with alkyl group it happens with only with electronegative group uh, and the electronegative group tends to occupy preferentially the axial position and that is uh, the anomalic effect and this is uh, quite important in explaining the product formation or the dynamic stereochemistry in sugar molecules. Okay. Thank you.